Welcome to Life with Bella. Thank you for giving your time for spiritual development. Spiritual development or investing, I believe, yields rich dividends in the earthly realm. Today, the episode is going to be a little different. I'm in conversation with my sister, Alice Andrew. Uh, she is the director of our international ministry called Symphony. And this is based in Chennai, India. This section is taken from a series that we did on the Proverbs 31 women. We are portraying this Proverbs 31 woman as someone who has found her identity in Christ. Her objective is that uh, she will not be seen as an intimidating woman, but as somebody who is uh, inspiring for us to be able to follow. Okay. I promise this conversation will be educational, enlightening and also empowering. So concentrate, do comment and also connect. I will see you again after the conversation. Thank you. talk on the Proverbs 31 woman, we will see another facet of her, a strong woman. She is a strong woman. You all probably heard this saying, when the going gets tough, the tough get going, right? So but how far does the going go? Isn't there an end to that? Today we are going to see the secret of becoming a strong woman when you can tie on to another source. We have Alice. Alice, mm -hmm. shall we continue our discussion? Yeah, it's been going strong. Well, that's You're going right. from strength to strength, yeah. I see. And mm -hmm. uh, we've been delving deeper into different facets mm -hmm. of uh, the Proverbs 31 woman. Mm -hmm. And uh, mm -hmm. so what are we in for today? Well, I think we probably need to see what is the definition of being a strong woman. We describe strength in terms of uh, so many variables that we use. But for a woman, who is a strong woman? You know, I would say, like, especially in the South Asian context, of late I've been seeing mushrooming of a lot of uh, women in political mm -hmm. places. Okay. And women are assuming a lot of uh, leadership positions in the corporate, in the public arena. Mm -hmm. They are being heard. Uh, they're strong. They are imposing. Mm -hmm. And uh, it gives an appearance of strength. That's the kind of strength uh, we are looking at. Or is there more to the strength that we would like to talk about from the Proverbs 31. I mean, we are drawing out of what a proverbial 31 woman looks like when she's mm -hmm. talking about strength. Bible talks about in quietness and confidence shall be your strength. You know, you could be strong even without being able to speak a word in public. We are uh, zooming in from outside to inside. Mm -hmm. So t two aspects. One, who is able to um, fight against all odds, or if there is a lot of pressure, she is able to withstand. She doesn't one is to succumbs. Yes. Sort of, you know. One is being able to bulldoze away. Mm -hmm. Another one, when things are coming against her, she is able to stand strong. Doesn't buckle under pressure. Doesn't buckle under pressure. Okay, so that's, mm -hmm. that's a kind of an image of a strong woman. Is it what is a normal understanding? Probably that's the kind of a connotation that comes to my mind. To your mind? But yet, when I look into the Bible, there's a reference which says, when I'm weak, then I'm strong. Yes. So how do you see that? So, so there is a place for even weak people to come across as strong mm -hmm. in the eyes of God. Mm -hmm. And how, how do you interpret that? The Bible says, uh, be strong in the Lord. In the Lord. Right? So, okay. so strength is attached to being you connected with somebody who is stronger than you and you derive the strength from them. Right? Okay. So the be strong in the Lord, as a child of God, you have the strength of God within you. Mm -hmm. So, in fact, when you say, uh, when I'm weak, mm -hmm. I'm strong, mm -hmm. basically what means just when you are uh, to the point of shutting down, you literally don't have to shut down. Mm -hmm. There's another engine that kicks in. 
to take over to from take where over. you left. Okay. So literally, mm -hmm. you are. That's why I said it's like being tied to an infinite source of um, energy or okay. uh, strength, like a well that doesn't go dry. Woman has been weakened mm -hmm. because of her relationship with the uh, God. If, you know, depending on her uh, ability to connect with God, she can either be strong or weak. Is it what you're trying to say? Exactly. If you go back. Uh, to the book of Genesis, right? God created man and woman you know, in a pristine environment. I bet they were uh, very strong, you know, mentally, physically, and spiritually. Sin entered uh, through Satan, and uh, man lost communion with God. Spiritually, he became dead. His spirit being became corrupted. So, therein set the downfall of man. So it became almost like a power struggle. And mm. I think a lot of strength, when we use the word strong, we try to associate with power. The offshoot of the wrong kind of strength in a mm. woman comes from a power struggle. I want to be stronger than you. You know, don't try to dominate. So th th there's another kind of a dynamics that has kicked in because of sin, right? Mm -hmm. You know, originally God wanted a sort of a mutual partnership. And there's a between, a man, and a between yeah. man and a woman, mm -hmm. for example. I mean, in marriage, yeah. in marriage or in mm -hmm. any relation in the society. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Two people contributing, you know, two genders contributing to the welfare of the society. Mm -hmm. And suddenly, sin brought mm -hmm. in this element of domination. I am better than you. Mm -hmm. So I am stronger than you. Then that got rephrased into I am stronger than you. So I have the right to dominate mm -hmm. or take charge or take control mm -hmm. over mm -hmm. but now what you are saying is totally different so I am not deriving my strength by taking charge of you mm -hmm. or controlling you mm -hmm. but I'm drawing mm -hmm. my strength by admitting that I'm weak mm -hmm. and leaning on mm -hmm. to another source which mm -hmm. is the source of the original source of strength exactly. that was given to me in the Garden of Eden exactly but God in his wisdom wanted to uh, redeem the situation Right, he wanted to bring equality, restore, restore, bring back the kind of a mutual connection and the mm -hmm. mutual submission, mutual mm -hmm. respect, mm -hmm. and therein lies the strength. Literally, we had sold ourselves to Satan, so he gives us one and only son and redeems us. Right, so now what happens? Somebody who gets connected to God through his son Jesus, they have the ability to be restored spiritually. Absolutely. Yes. So th that's the beauty. So now what we basically we're talking about, how can a woman bring back that kind of a strength, inner strength? How can she draw on the inner strength that mm -hmm. is within her because of Christ living within her? That's so how, how can she do it? So the way she can uh, derive strength from God is through faith. So mm -hmm. faith is what connected uh, us to God. Mm -hmm. So now we are talking about a finer shade now, finding strength. Now strength, strong, which has been wrongly associated with power, domination and control. Now you are bringing another beautiful element of surrender, mm -hmm. going back to the original source. Mm -hmm. So the power is not in reference to another gender, mm -hmm. power is in reference to my relationship with God. Excellent. Yes. That's that's a beautiful mm -hmm. revelation that you're bringing in. Mm -hmm. And I think you can explain to us even more on how do we develop this? Why is it important to look at power this way? Can you, before you talk us through mm -hmm. uh, the stages of uh, acquiring the strength mm -hmm. in Christ or in God, can you tell us why is it important for us to reorient our thinking, to revisit our understanding of a strong woman from this paradigm mm -hmm. not looking at it as a competition between two genders but as something wherein the woman draws her own mm -hmm. uh, strength from God and goes back to the original position in the Garden of Eden mm -hmm. that was given to her can mm -hmm. you talk us through why is it important for us to talk about these things for one Alice all the references that you were bringing in they're all very transitory right mm -hmm. temporal it's very temporal right o of the earthly domain all the years so mm -hmm. um, Let's say two siblings, boy and a girl. Sister is the older one. She can boss her <laughs> uh, over her brother, right? So that season of life, she has control over her uh, brother. Power right? over. The She's power. stronger. Mm. Perceives. Yeah, so, yeah, for a short season. 
the boy grows taller and stronger, then she loses it. Mm -hmm. So she goes to work or maybe she's at school. Maybe she's very good in math. So mm -hmm. she's considered very strong in math. So then again, in another uh, area of her life, she can exercise her dominance. Then is it this kind of uh, the power uh, map goes the power up and play. yes goes up and down based on her skill set or based on her physical strength or sometimes women exercise power because of the beauty the, the charm the charm <laughs> so all those are very uh, like as we said is uh, temporary but also it's very external. And it right. breeds disharmony. Exactly. And that was not the original intent of not. God. Yes. So it doesn't so create a harmony mm -hmm. between different mm -hmm. people mm -hmm. uh, in the society. In right? fact, when Satan deceived Eve, there was a power struggle, right? He said, if you would like to be, you know, if you want to be like God, mm -hmm. then this is the route you need to take. So he was trying to make them sin against God if they wanted to be like God. So you can be stronger than yes. God, smarter than God. Exactly. So it's the same thing, you know, that has been replicated in the gender uh, equation mm -hmm. now. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and I think the one who wins is Satan. You know, mm. if we give into thinking marriage or even any other uh, platform, if you want to establish your one-upmanship, right, nobody is going to be a winner. So that's you why know. the Bible says in quietness and confidence, mm -hmm. not mm -hmm. in domination mm -hmm. and control, control, shall be your strength. S yes. So okay. now how, how does a woman acquire this inner mm. strength? Yeah, that's yeah. good. Yeah. So wh wh where does she draw it from? So we, we, the reason we are bringing the reference of the Garden of Eden and uh, Adam and Eve and Satan is because we want to say man and woman were created in strength and uh, because of sin, uh, so many other sins destroyed the ability for <coughs> man and woman to be strong. God has given us another way by linking yourself with Christ. So there's so another um, element of authority here that you're bringing in now. Mm -hmm. You know, the connection to God. So you're also trying to say God created man and women as strong. Mm -hmm. You know, and one was the equality in strength. Mm -hmm. So we are now you're saying is with reference to God. So mm -hmm. there is there an element of authority if you don't appreciate the authority that God has given man, it's quite possible that you'll be trying to find uh, power structures or, you know, try to dominate and mm -hmm. have a sense of false sense of authority mm -hmm. by not exercising the right authority given to you as a strong woman in Christ. Very true. But the thing is the beauty in you connecting with Christ, it is not kind of an authoritarian kind of uh, relationship with God. He is not trying to boss you to, you know, expect you to, or does he demand something out of you to do something? The Bible says gentle and meek. When Christ comes and resides in you, the strength that you get is not something that would uh, uh, try to establish uh, one being stronger than the other. So that's beautiful. Mm. So the Proverbs 31 woman, you know, uh, strength that is being described here. Well, just going back to Proverbs 31, 25, which is the verse that we are anchoring this discussion on mm -hmm. about she is strong. So the derivative verse, it explains the Proverbs 31 woman like this. She's clothed with strength and dignity. Now mm -hmm. I see a parallel between what you're talking about, drawing on the strength from Jesus. It's almost like God has given us a garment of righteousness. We clothe ourselves mm -hmm. with this kind of a strength. It's, it's added on. And when it's given to us from Christ, so there is no power struggle, we assume we increase in dignity and strength. As you said, she's clothed with dignity. Mm -hmm. I'm reminded of... Um, when a woman connects herself with Christ, clothed with strength she and dignity, and dignity, mm -hmm. when a woman connects with Jesus, she gets the righteousness of Jesus. Mm -hmm. And the Bible says, the righteous are as bold as the lion. Wow, that's a beautiful point. See, we see a lot of link in the scriptures mm -hmm. between strength and quietness, dignity, boldness. Mm -hmm. So there's not like a on your face kind of a strength. But there is a quiet strength emerging from within, but it does manifest outside. Exactly, because to be able to reign in life, for you need to have the confidence that you are seen as a righteous person. 
before God. You need that confidence. And you need to transfer it to the society, society. when in your dealings. Mm -hmm. People need to see you as strong, mm -hmm. not as a diffident mm -hmm. person. Mm -hmm. And that is where we are called to rule mm -hmm. as the righteous ones. Because a confident person will mm -hmm. not be second guessing themselves. See, a lot of times when your relationship with God is not good, let's say you the uh, that morning you got and f got up and fought with your husband or you mm -hmm. scolded your children immediately satan would uh, send thoughts into your mind saying that look at you you know you profess to be uh, a good and a godly person look at the fall you know mm. that you are seeing in your life but that is when you can come with confidence and say i have the righteousness of christ in Mm -hmm. Right. So your uh, whether you are angry or uh, you are uh, mad at somebody, that does not disqualify you to come before uh, Christ in full confidence. And also, and it also translates to to people as you are seeing. You know, you are guilt ridden, and guilt leads to stress and fear. You mm -hmm. know, there's a, a progression in the way you view yourself. Mm -hmm. And also the way you deal with people. It's only a weak person who needs to raise the voice. I remember mm -hmm. our dad used to say, mm -hmm. he, he was uh, very mm -hmm. keen on developing strength in his daughters. Mm -hmm. And one of the things he would say, mm -hmm. mm, a woman who raises her voice mm -hmm. is uh, displaying to the world that mm -hmm. she is weak. So uh, another way a yeah. uh, woman uh, sh can show her strength is uh, not being afraid to let go. Let go of her rights let's say uh, in the power struggle uh, somebody is trying to establish their dominance or somebody has uh, cheated you on something mm -hmm. right so god says you know show the other cheek he said so why bible says the meek shall inherit the earth but exactly. we think the powerful inherit the earth exactly we think the, the ones who have the lot of power mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know can control exactly but what God is saying is the one who is able to let go of pride and yeah, let because go the, on what basis are you letting it go because you know that you have another defender on your right? behalf on your behalf so you're actually so leaning you're on exactly because you are not fighting the battle alone right so you're, you're becoming stronger by leaning mm -hmm. on somebody who's stronger exactly. than you okay so that's yeah. a wise woman too that's the, she's a, she's a wise woman okay. and she's a strong woman Another way is uh, a strong woman is not afraid to come out of a comfort zone to break traditions, right? Because a lot of times a fearful woman, a woman who fears or wanting to please other people mm -hmm. will more and more go to this uh, traditional pattern in her role, right? Because she wants to maybe please her husband, her mother-in-law or her neighbors or even church. A lot of conservative church model calls defines a woman to conform to certain models that is expected of her. But a strong woman, when she knows the calling that is placed on her life, mm -hmm. she will not be afraid to break traditions. She so quietly goes about doing it. <laughs> <laughs> Quietness and confidence to execute it, right? Yeah, Shall yeah. be your strength. Yeah, because You'll all these people that you're relying on, you know, if it's a group of people who you want to please, you know, of mm -hmm. course I'm not talking about the family, lot of times these are transitory people you know they'll be here with you one day they'll be gone and also even if it is a family when slowly you are b building your inner strength and you're beginning to display mm -hmm. your family is going to benefit from the inner strength that is being manifested on the mm -hmm. outside you know no, your so children God are strong so. yeah. And, and one more dimension I, I see in the scriptures is mm -hmm. the joy of the Lord is my strength, mm -hmm. isn't it? So, so there is a joy. That's a nice word. So, yes. mm -hmm. so it's, it's not just an internal thing, it's a manifest thing. So mm -hmm. you, you are able to partake of joy, you uh, enjoy the world around you mm -hmm. because you see it from a freer, not desiring to control and take charge mm -hmm. of kind of a perspective. So you let go and the Lord puts a joy in your heart and that is your source of strength. I like this verse, okay. A strong woman does not fear. And it's taken from 1 Peter 3 6. The concept is from here. Mm -hmm. Sarah obeyed her husband Abraham and called him her master. You are her daughters when you do what is right without fear of what your husbands might do. Fear in a family is very debilitating. And that fear comes from. Uh, a wrong interpretation of the scripture, a wrong definition of the role.
you many times I saw you referring to the concept of submission, right? Mm -hmm. When it is being misused, a uh, lot of times submission and obedience, if you really see both are totally different. Mm -hmm. Submission comes out of a mutual respect. Obedience is more on somebody being higher than you. Mm -hmm. And that is not the kind of relationship in a family guard. You uh, mean a blind obedience? Blind or obedience or the obedience that comes out of fear. Okay. So here it says, Sarah, you and I are daughters of Sarah, mm -hmm. right? And Sarah is mentioned in the Hall of Faith. Mm -hmm. you know, because I think there's a context there. Mm -hmm. Sarah was in a very fearful position all the time because a couple of times uh, her husband actually disowned her mm -hmm. and in the Bible uh, he, he did uh, say that she was a sister which she was the king took her and uh, God amazingly rescued her she knew that her strength came from God who protected mm -hmm. her mm -hmm. so even a little bit of uh, fickle mindedness in mm -hmm. the husband did mm -hmm. not matter to her so in time we find that both of them grew into faith and maturity that's right. and together they could partake of the blessings mm -hmm. of God mm -hmm. uh, so that's good so fear, fear is the opposite of faith. faith because fear comes from the enemy's camp mm -hmm. yeah, fear is actually opposite of faith so mm -hmm. what is faith so what do you mean by fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom? So there is a kind of a positive fear, is it? How would you explain? How would you qualify a fear of the Lord? Fear of the Lord is a reverential fear. Mm -hmm. That's what actually literally there, when you say fear of the Lord. It's not a paralyzing fear. It is not a paralyzing. You are giving God the preeminence that is due. Mm -hmm for him to that be is that. rightfully due rightfully due to so okay so mm -hmm. you respect so you're saying reverence and respect mm -hmm. so that's the kind of an interpretation of fear there yeah, so right. we are not saying you know some people think uh, we transfer the same kind of fear to people mm -hmm. and situations so the it's kind of fear, fear where honor is given mm -hmm. literally there it is god is given honor that's a kind of uh, terminology so this that kind of a paralyzing fear which makes you weak mm -hmm. is, uh, is is a different kind of a fear where mm -hmm. it's it's like you're afraid of the negative consequences mm -hmm. what if exactly kind of what if something happens yes. to me what if I'm not protected mm -hmm. what if some harm comes mm -hmm. to my person mm -hmm. so because you don't even have the strength of the Lord to lean on mm -hmm. so you're constantly afraid of people what do people think of me and you know, what's the opinion of people so such a woman cannot have she a cannot be a strong woman so, yeah yes. and she cannot wear the garment of dignity too exactly. she cannot look dignified mm -hmm. you know she can appear dignified yes. but you know she'll feel that uh, mm -hmm. she has to protect her dignity mm -hmm. by some power or manipulation or some control mm -hmm. right yeah, yeah that that's that so then takes women into more uh, devious routes right mm -hmm, mm -hmm. she has to establish mm -hmm. her strength mm -hmm. by w the first point we said one upmanship right now she has to win the power game mm -hmm. by some backdoor ways outsmarting outsmarting not the mm -hmm. legitimate way of trusting in the law to do the compensation exactly. mm -hmm. you take the law in your hands mm -hmm. and that is the kind of a corrupted version of strength and power exactly. that has come yeah. to you, be you, you may think you're winning in the short run but uh, one, it's not pleasing in God's sight. Mm. And how far can you go? Mm -hmm. Because inherently our strength runs out, like you said, exactly. right? You know, we cannot yeah. just go on mm -hmm. forever. We need to at some point recognize mm -hmm. that, you know, we cannot do it on our mm -hmm. own. How can a woman link herself? What is the process? How can she link herself to the extra strength? So how does she prevent herself from how unplugging? She, yes. So and I'm thinking of, let's say it's a stationary car, right? Mm -hmm. The car, uh, maybe because of the battery or the, ga the gasoline or the petrol running out, it stops. So immediately what do you do? You call a towing company, you know, another truck or something and you connect it and the truck gives the extra power for the, the pull the pull for the car, right? So how, how can a woman connect herself with God so mm. that she derives all the strength for uh, managing the home? for all the responsibilities that she has to face you know even from a young mother right uh, she needs a wisdom and the strength and you know, physical strength to take care of the child then teenagers mm -hmm. then all the responsibilities you mm -hmm. know if you're teaching then if you're cooking where, where does she get all the strength waiting on the Lord waiting on the Lord exactly mm -hmm. faith is uh, the way she connects with God she appropriates mm -hmm. this 
Yes, the way she appropriates her strength is through mm -hmm. faith. So what is faith? The power of God is released through faith. Mm -hmm. Faith, the Bible says, is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. Mm -hmm. Right. So the, the all the strength that is in the spiritual realm, it can all become yours through faith. Mm -hmm. It doesn't happen through good works. It doesn't try happen by you trying to, you know, outsmart, outsmart or play the know? power game yes. and manipulate yes. back your entries. Exactly. Okay. So the the power of God is released into your life because of faith. So you, you unblock yourself by believing mm -hmm. that he alone is your source of power. Exactly. You know, I can't run my appliances by plugging into two sources, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Can I? So I need to choose which one to plug. And I choose to plug into the right source, mm -hmm. which is God, isn't mm -hmm. it? So that, that's the way one goes yeah, about it, exactly. right? Because when you say God, all the promises of God are tied to God. So when you say the promises of God, mm -hmm. all the promises of God come out of the nature of God, mm -hmm. which is goodness. What is a promise of God? I mean, why is it important for us to have a promise to be strong? What is the promise of God? Promise of God is all the blessing that is loaded in his word. Okay, so that's like a rope, exactly. a handle mm -hmm. for us to be able to navigate through life, you know, yeah. so you, we don't fall. Mm -hmm. we, it's, it's like a fuel. The fuel mm -hmm. for a strong woman mm -hmm. comes from the faith. So she doesn't have a burnout. She doesn't derail. She doesn't. Uh, like we always do, Bella. Let's uh, kind of quickly run through uh, a character study. I think uh, in all these sequences, we've been talking a little about uh, drawing some more nuggets out of real life characters in the Bible. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm led to believe Jochebed was a woman of faith, right? I mean, she, she was a strong woman and her strength came from, like you said, about uh, faith. It's, it's looking into the future, a hopefulness, a certainty that the child she gave birth to was definitely a child of God. The Egyptian authority had issued a dictum saying that all the Israelite children had to be killed. So Jochebed is... Uh, Jochebed is the mother, mother of, of Moses. Moses. Okay. And I think a lot of people know about how she put the baby in the river Nile mm -hmm. and the baby was picked up. Mm -hmm. When all the other mothers succumbed, like you said, to the pressure of the government and they said, okay, they got, they, they, their kids were killed. But she said, no, my God, Jehovah, mm -hmm. never wants a child that is birthed by him or brought into the world by him to be destroyed because he sends every child with a plan and a purpose. Now, who is the authority to cut short the life of the child? I will work around it. I will defy it, not in a way that I lose you know, myself, but I work around it in such a way that I'm able to rescue my child. Mm -hmm. And she so beautifully planned the rescue of the child by putting the child in a basket in the river Nile. And mm -hmm. God favored her faith, mm -hmm. her strength, her inner strength, quietly, confidently trusting God. And God made Moses grow up as an Egyptian prince. And he became the deliverer of the Israelites from the e Egyptian persecution oh and uh, authority. So that's the definition of a strong mom. Mom, she sees right mm. down to the consequences of mm -hmm. staying in the faith because she doesn't think it's just a kind of a small crumbs that she needs to survive. It's not a food for the day. Mm. Sort of a promise, like you said, she, mm. she was rooted. Somebody who stood in the gap. In the belief mm. that it's not the government mm. which she has to be afraid of, mm. but it's the God whom she has to revere and have a holy fear for and trust in him. And that pulled her through. Mm -hmm. And that's a strong woman, right? I mean, a strong woman creates a strong uh, generation. Exactly. And that is a yes. concept, that is the significance of us understanding the reason for being clothed in strength mm -hmm. and dignity. It's not just for your own sake, but it's for the sake of the community, for the sake of the children that you bring to the earth, or you may know if you're, if you're single, it's for, for the society that you interact with, you know. Mm -hmm, so mm -hmm. that's, a, that's a very uh, mm -hmm. good, uh, mm -hmm. deeper understanding that I have uh, got no, of. It's, it's a lovely example. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm always um, uh, encouraged by reading her uh, story. Mm -hmm. So where she saw something special in her son. And she did what it, whatever it took to save her son. So this right? faith also gives you an insight. Mm -hmm. A strong woman who's, who's connected to God is able to see 
in a situation like that i think fear mm -hmm. actually numbs your senses mm -hmm. so even if you if you can see something good mm -hmm. when you're afraid you're more paralyzed by it you can't even take a positive decision mm -hmm. to move out of that negative situation whereas mm -hmm. in faith you're calm you're you're saying okay the person i plugged into is god mm -hmm. he's going to come to my rescue mm -hmm. i can boldly the righteous mm -hmm. are bold as a line mm -hmm. take a step forward mm -hmm. and i know mm -hmm. i'm strong even though i feel weak mm -hmm. and wobbly i'm sure that's how she must have felt mm -hmm. god mm -hmm. will come to the rescue mm -hmm. because that's the source of power mm -hmm. that i'm drawing my power from so basically when you take the first step mm -hmm. in that bigger equation mm -hmm. right god is just wanting that you do one part of the bigger puzzle Mm -hmm. then he comes in and fits into the all the other one right yes. so if you see even in the jacobet story mm -hmm. there was the miriam then there was the pharaoh's daughter right and then in you know so how the whole picture god's plan was uh, came to fruition because of one woman who in faith and in strength mm -hmm. right venture to take the first step absolutely mm. that she she defied the order of the pharaoh mm. and that that's like amazing and i mm -hmm. think that leaves us with a very mm -hmm. very strong message mm -hmm. that god wants every woman who's listening to us mm -hmm. or even a man that we need to draw upon the right source mm -hmm. of strength mm -hmm. and being strong brings with it confidence mm -hmm. dignity and one other beautiful thing that's coming through is faith is not uh, an internal thing it's it's not something which is tucked away in the heart faith actually expresses itself through action mm -hmm. fear makes you stay in the same position the same mm -hmm. rut but a strong woman who's drawing upon the faith of god moves ahead and that mm -hmm. is how i think the proverbs 31 woman yeah i'm reminded of hundred things yeah i'm reminded of the verse in proverbs 31 it says when we talking about fear it says she is not afraid of the snow mm mhm so she's not afraid of the future mm. right so that's one of the mm -hmm. areas where you know fear anxiety which leads to depression and mental health mm -hmm. problems so i think that's why time and again whenever god related to man the first thing he said do not be afraid fear not fear not because do he not knew, be terrified yes. he knew fear is a one thing mm -hmm. that will paralyze a person mm -hmm. so he knows and it's very important you don't give in to that emotion called fear it will prevent you from drawing out all the strength that is within you it kind of saps your strength you mm -hmm. feel that way right mm -hmm. when you're afraid or anxious mm -hmm. about something you just kind of feel like i don't feel like doing anything i'm mm -hmm. sapped mm -hmm. that leads to panic attacks leads mm -hmm. to a whole lot of stress related problems mm -hmm. health related problems oh, so definitely so so i think a strong woman is also somebody uh, in conclusion who is able to tame her emotions in light of god's mm -hmm. word mm -hmm. so either you trust god and make the move mm -hmm. that will from then mm -hmm. on you know there is god is there to pull you mm -hmm. or you give in to fear then you're falling into the enemy's camp you're drowned you're drowned in your own so time. good thank you very good much Alice. i mean i i, I am just going there. away with a lot of uh, new insights on what it is to be strong in the eyes of the lord mm -hmm. you know it, it may not it may look very different from what we have been Mm -hmm. uh tall mm -hmm. a strong woman ought to look like mm -hmm. how we probably visualize growing up so this is a different kind of a strength and i'm glad that we could spend time to good. you know share our experiences and sort of encourage the audience yeah. here good good nice being with you all thank you so that concludes our discussion on the strong woman another uh, facet of a probs 31 woman So, were you blessed? There are some areas that really uh, connected with you. Do write to us. We would like to produce more of these kind of content that will liberate us. The Bible says, "It is for freedom that Christ set us free." Shall we close with a word of prayer? Father God, we want to thank you for your faithfulness. Thank you for your faithfulness in feeding us and nourishing us in due season. I place before you Lord the things that we learned bring to remembrance when we need them Father that will be 
built up in our spirit, soul and body. The loving name of Jesus I pray. Amen and Amen. Love you and God bless you. Thank you. 